Hello everybody, my name is Travis Kilgore, and uh, thank you for clicking on this video at my second YouTube channel, Figure Around and Find Out, and uh, I know things are being done a little bit out of order, uh, you'll see in a moment, but as the title of the page says, this is just me kind of fooling around and finding out what works, what doesn't and uh, specifically with regards to figs. Uh, my wife is the gardener in the family. She's the brains, I'm the brawn, but I do have one narrow field of, uh, expertise isn't the right word, but interest, obsession, something like that, and it just so happens to be figs. So the inaugural video really should have been a results video, but my whole thing is casual, so, you know, it is what it is. I will do another video probably in the next day or so uh, where I detail the process of how we got to this point, uh, which is air layering. We'll come back to that. But this was a branch until about five minutes ago. This was a branch on my uh, brown turkey fig tree that my wife bought for me for Christmas about five years ago. And the reason the whole video is taking place here at the back of my truck and not at the base of the tree with me cutting this thing loose is because we just had a uh, porch built on the house and there's still quite a bit of scrap lumber and odds and ends and you know so we'll just do it here by my truck which is so nice and clean <coughs> but uh the reveal here that's aluminum foil which i'll explain all this in a moment but first, Holy look at all those mug. roots. Look at that. Isn't that something? Hell, you did it, Daddy Green Thumbs. <laughs> so, while I get my... Damn, I don't have my pocket knife. Let's see if I can use this. Uh, yeah, anything that you see me do on this channel... There is a near 100% chance that I either learned it from YouTube or from uh, a number of fig forums and groups that I'm in uh, on Facebook. And I didn't think to look up the titles before I started the video, but there's Southeastern Fig Growers, I don't even remember Southern Fig. I literally last year went on Facebook and I'm on a little slug. Get out of there. And just typed in fig growers and looked up groups. But this technique of propagation is called air layering. Figs, uh, like a great many other plants, in the wild, if a branch is low enough and gets heavy enough to the ground and touches the ground, it will sprout roots and thereby give rise to another plant. Now doing that on the ground naturally or through uh, man's help, like you can take a brick and put it on it and hold it on the ground, that's layering. But this is called air layering uh, because it's not done on the ground. Now as you can see, this is a Gatorade bottle. They make clamshell oh, yeah. oh, come on now. they make plastic clamshells uh, that you can buy on Amazon or in lawn and garden stores or anything like that uh, but the video, and I'm going to do this as a talk. I think you can figure out what's going on here. The video that I watched, uh, the guy used one of those pre-bought clamshells. And just about the time I was thinking, oh, that's cool. He says, you can do this with a Coke bottle or any kind of plastic bottle. We don't drink much soda here. But we do keep some Gatorade handy. So, 
I went. And got an empty Gatorade bottle. You know, cut the mouth off. Drilled a hole in the bottom to accommodate the branch. And then cut it like that. And I even cut it on the back side too. Not completely through, but I gave it some relief cuts to where I could use it like a clamshell. And uh, I'll detail this much better in my air layering video that I'll do next. But literally just took a pretty good little handful of moist potting soil and packed it into the homemade clamshell and uh, secured it with the zip ties, which as you can see, I had to use two every time I went around it because the ones I had weren't quite long enough. And what I'm potting this in is Scott's premium topsoil and uh, my wife and I, Heather, had poured most of this into a five gallon bucket and pre-mixed it before starting the video and poured it in this pot. But we did, it wasn't even a rough ratio, a ratio that I could eyeball. Three to one, four to one potting soil to mushroom compost. And, uh, you know, take anything you see or hear on this video with a grain of salt, the title tells you. Figure around and find out. I mean, I'm no expert. You're literally watching the documentation of much of my learning uh, about this. But, uh, what the hell was I going to say? Yeah, don't... Don't take anything I say as gospel truth. Uh, feel free to check with other sources. Lots of people know more than I do, but in my limited experience with propagating cuttings, the various methods, uh, a little bit of potting soil or topsoil, augment it with some uh, mushroom compost, and they seem to be really happy. Say what, baby? I was just going to say, don't forget earthworm castings. It's really good for you. Oh, earthworm castings. Yeah. Just, we may do, you know, soil videos in the future, but let's be honest, y'all. Figs come from the Middle East and the Mediterranean, and they're, you know, they evolved to grow in the desert. That's not exactly fertile soil. So they're, they're very, very tough plants, which is actually what kind of led to to me getting involved in all this you know it started just with me growing a fig tree because i wanted to eat fresh figs because my great grandmother had a fig tree when i was a kid and uh, my wife's grandmother had a fig tree so it was fond memories for both of us so i got sawdust on my my little baby here when they were building that deck but uh you know it just started with that but then i discovered how uh how hardy these plants are and there are apparently there are temperature considerations you know some figs have to have that Mediterranean and or Middle Eastern heat uh, to work uh, some are not super happy about too much rain which we're in Rossville Georgia here which is about 200 yards that way is Tennessee so Chattanooga is just flip shot distance from where I'm standing more effectively, it's East Ridge, anyway. Um, and Tennessee, and I'm gonna go ahead and call it and say this area, is the sixth wettest state in the nation. So some fig, ooh, a ladybug, look at there. <laughs> I know this ain't professional for the video, but hell, I ain't a pro. Look at there, there she is, hey. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye, little lady. Yeah. Uh, We're in growing zone, what are we, 7A, 7B? 7B, I believe. Yeah, Chattanooga, North Georgia, Northwest Georgia here, uh, growing zone 7B. We get lots of rain. 
so that can affect what fig variety uh, you might grow because when they're fruiting and it rains uh, it's a desert plant and it goes hot damn water <laughs> and just sucks it up and then pumps it straight into the plant and some varieties of fig the fruit will burst it makes it bad to burst when it rains a lot but uh brown turkeys they're they handle water better than a lot of varieties and some people talk shit about brown turkeys i guess they're fig hipsters you know it, it's got to be a violet de bordeaux or you know some expensive and rare cutting there's people that sell cuttings about six inches long for 80 damn dollars i got news for you people i don't know if i'll ever sell cuttings but if i do it won't be no 80 dollars it's a damn piece of wood and this stuff is so hardy and resilient you just about have to burn it to ashes and then beat the ashes with a hammer to keep it from growing i can't tell you how many stories i've read of people that dug up an entire plant for whatever reason it had to go they thought it was dead and so there's just a root ball that they toss to the side and leave it all winter and come back in the spring and there's green shoots sticking up off the root ball that ain't even been in the ground so uh figs are a great choice for somebody like me who does not have the greenest of thumb unlike my wife so uh anyway i guess i'm gonna wrap this video up i just kind of you know revealed the the uh the results and that thing what's today's date baby today is may the 31st may the 31st i did this on march the 29th i set this up and uh, so a more detailed video is coming but just in brief you'll take a knife and kind of cut right there around the node uh, rooting hormone helps i learned that from a video brush some rooting hormone on there pack it into clamshell and in one of my forums there was a guy that said he had tried 30 times with coke bottles and never produced a single root and I noticed that all the successful air layering videos that I was watching, uh, I saw a video of a guy, I believe in, uh, may have been Indonesian, but he did it with just tinfoil. He didn't even use a, a clamshell of any kind. He literally prepped the wood, put the dirt in the tinfoil, and wrapped it around and tied it around. And in three weeks, bam, he had a huge root ball on that. Uh, as a matter of fact, when I do my air layering video, uh, I won't use plain tinfoil, but uh, I'm probably going to follow his technique because he got really, really good results. But uh, all the successful air layering videos uh, I was seeing, the uh, air layering was opaque, whether it was black plastic, the clamshells coming clear and black, and all the successful ones I saw, they were black. Uh, and then other people using other methods, they was always, if it wasn't, transparent if, if it was a transparent clamshell homemade or bought they would wrap it in tinfoil and this is me talking I know it looks like it's coming out of my mouth but this is literally coming out of my ass I'm talking out of my ass here but I figure it's either keeping Sun off of the baby roots or keeping Sun off the moisture and keeping it from drying out I don't know the mechanism uh, that necessitates it but as near as I can tell, I think uh, I think having your air layer covered is uh, the way to go. So anyway, this is I'm gonna wrap this up. This is the potting of my my first air layered brown turkey uh, fig, which is gonna go to my friends Brandy and Heather up in Nashville. We love y'all. Uh, Little with Sandra and Amelia Ann. Yep gift for some for some dear friends of ours and their family and their children so uh we're gonna wrap this up stay tuned for more videos i mean figs have kind of become my little hobby and i like to run my mouth so you know you can maybe use this to find information towards other uh more reliable sources again if you're on facebook southeastern fig growers usa fig growers i think there's a number of forums you know you'll probably spot me there uh, YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. There's all kinds of, I mean, hell, you're already here. You know, you can find a video if somebody knows what the hell they're doing. But, uh, you know, ask people. Find people to ask. There's all kinds of information out there, resources. Uh, it's easy. It's fun. Here in Growing Zone 7B in 
southeast Tennessee slash northwest Georgia. By no means have I tried all the varieties, but I've got three varieties of fig growing here. We'll, you know, we'll come to more of that in time. But they're easy, they're fun, they're hard to kill. The fruit is absolutely delicious. And uh, well, yeah, stick around. You know, there'll probably be videos of us drying figs and making fig preserves. Hell, we made three and a half gallons of fig jam last year. So uh, thank you for hanging out and uh, hopefully my video editing skills will develop. I can't say get better because I currently have none. That's why this is all one take. But, uh, you know, maybe I'll get better at video editing or maybe not, but, you know, we'll, we'll learn together. So once again, I'm Travis Kilgore. It's my wife, Heather, on the camera there. And uh, we're here at Kilgore's Landing, Chesteros, and beautiful and scenic Rossville, Georgia, just across the line from East Ridge, Tennessee. And uh, we're going to figure around and find out. Thanks, y'all. Have a good day.